Dear students, so now we are going to see the different uh, steps involved in analyzing a beam using consistent deformation method. So we are going with the procedure. Okay, on one side it's going to be the procedure, and in the other half we are going to see a demo. So how to do it? So together we will write the steps here and the demo on the other side. So let's consider the analysis of a beam, a propped cantilever, the very first structure that we analyzed in the very beginning, use subjected to say a UDL having intensity W and the properties by P L E I and the beam B A to B. Now we are going to start seeing the procedure step by step we'll see so the step one is the determination of the ds value okay calculate the degree of static indeterminacy so that's what we are going to do here so how to get the degree of static indeterminacy so for that we know that uh, we need to convert this into a structure of forces so we are converting that so we have the structure and we have uh, reactions R A H A M A R B and the load is there W. Now it's about the calculation of DS. So how we calculate DS? So DS we know that is given by R minus E. So it can be in here there are four reactions three equations of equilibrium so I can write 4 minus 3 equal to 1 or if I am preferring to ignore the horizontal reaction because there are no horizontal loads in such a case this equation will become ds equal to r minus 2 instead of r minus 3 and the r will be 3 so 3 minus 2 again you are going to get the value as 1 itself so whether you do in this, uh, this way or this way you are going to get the ds value and that's the very first step. Okay, now we are going to see the second step. So the second step is deciding the primary structure. So we need to decide what should be the primary structure we are going to use for the process. Okay, what should be the primary structure and what are the options we have? We have two options. The first one cantilever the second one simply supported out of this you can choose any so for uh, here I will do one thing I will uh, give numbering here also so you will, it will be easy for you to understand so I'm going for the second step what I'm doing in second step I'm going to decide the primary structure so when we use unit load method this uh, cantilever profile is a easier option because we don't have to calculate the reactions before analyzing that we have already seen while uh, calculating the displacement for a cantilever and for a simply supported in case of a cantilever we don't have to calculate the reaction so whenever it can be converted to a cantilever profile I will always prefer to use a cantilever profile so here I'm using the cantilever profile so I have decided the profile now what I need to do is so when I assume it as a cantilever, I have already considered the these set of reactions because I have considered it as fixed. So this is also going to have RA, HA and MA. So these three has been taken care of. So what left is this UDL and the reaction RB. This reaction RB hence become our redundant. Okay. So, so whatever that is left, I am representing those. So W and RB. So I have decided the primary structure or the basic structure what I'm going to follow. So I have that. Now the next step. So we are going for the step three. So in step three, we need to have the different substructure figures. Okay. We need to have the different substructure figures. So we are going to plot the substructure figures 
and the number of substructure figure depends upon the ds value okay so the number of substructure figures is going to be ds plus 1 okay so in our case the value of ds is 1 so in the third step we require ds plus 1 that is two figures and that both the figures should be the basic structure we have decided that is cantilever so you can simply plot two figures okay figure one figure two that is the step three okay ds is one so two figures now in step four okay in step four we are going to load the load first sub figure okay the first sub figure should be loaded and the loading is the external load okay whatever external load is given in the problem that should be loaded on the very first figure so in our case the external load is w okay so in the first figure apply the load w okay that's our step number four now what about step number five in step number five we are going to load the rest of the figures okay rest of the figures using redundance okay in our case we are having just one redundant or basically means that to achieve the cantilever profile i released one reaction and that reaction become redundant if there is just one redundant you can apply that redundant to the next figure if in case there are more than one redundant so automatically ds value will increase and you will be having more sub figures for on each sub figure so the second one you can apply here and in the third figure you can, you can apply the next redundant so you should be very careful you should apply only one redundant at a time okay so that is the step number okay the step number five we loaded the figure the redundant redundant loads now the step six is the compatibility equation so the compatibility equation can be constructed by considering the deformation so we will be checking the deformation of the original structure or the structure that is given in the problem so this end is fixed so straight line for some distance then because of the load it will go down and it goes here okay and what about the sub figures or the substructures because of this loading this will be straight line for some distance and it will deflect what about here straight line for some distance and it will displace like this so now we can name this as as it is the deflection at b i will call it as y b 1 and this deflection i am calling it as y b 2 because it is at the deflection of the uh, point b and in the second figure this is my figure 1 this is figure 2 so y b 1 from first figure y b 2 from the second figure so now i have these conditions and i can directly write the compatibility equation what should be the compatibility equation here the compatibility should be based on the redundant so here we have considered the redundant as the reaction at b so we need to write that condition so in the original structure the displacement at this point is zero here it is yb1 here it is yb2 so i can write my compatibility equation that is the step six as yb1 plus yb2 is equal to zero and this equation is always written based on the chosen redundant so the direction of displacement in the direction of the redundant is considered so here the redundant is a vertical reaction hence we are talking about displacement or deflection if the redundant was a moment then we'll be talking about rotation so we have the compatibility equation that is step six and now we have the step seven solve or analyze 
So this is the different steps involved in case of a consistent deformation method approach. So procedure is shown here and now we are going to calculate here we are going to calculate the value of yb1 we will calculate that yb2 we will calculate and then we will substitute this in this equation and we will be getting the value of rb or the redundant that we have chosen so this is in short the consistent deformation method procedure so first the determination of ds value degree of static indeterminacy then choose whether we are going with cantilever or we are going with simply supported then Construct the substructures, subfigures, depending upon the value of ds. If ds is 1, the subfigures are going to be 2. So I plotted two subfigures. Then load the always load the first figure with the external load. Whatever load that is given in the problem, load it. And in the subsequent figures, you can load one redundant eat at a time. Okay, for the first one, I'm using RB. If there are more redundants in the third figure, I can use that fourth figure and it goes on. And uh, then we can prepare the compatibility equation considering the redundant. So here redundant is a vertical uh, reaction. So the vertical displacement is the one that we will be preparing the equation with. So from the first figure I am having yb1. From the second figure I am having yb2. And in the original figure the displacement is 0. So yb1 plus yb2 equal to 0. And then I will just solve this equation to get the final answer. 